in this documentary you will see miraculous UFO footage that has been authenticated by top UFO. The documentary featured an extensive summary of the footage, the canisters containing the footage, an expert analysis from the likes of Stanton Friedman. One film expert noted in the documentary that the footage came in an old Soviet canister that had information labeled on it that was consistent with info written directly on the film reel. The numbers on the film's header matched the canisters they came. The header of the film had the crest of the KGB on it and the term for T.O.P. secret is shown in the first few seconds of this footage and image to the right. Having real-looking alien footage is one thing. But including the original film real canisters means you are extremely close to proving 100 authenticity. This is something that has traditionally lacked in other more popular alien videos such as the widely known alien autopsy or the alien interview videos. 3. Several KGB documents In the documentary, several KGB documents are produced to prove the film is authentic along with credible testimony from a former Soviet KGB operative who claims to know about the event. At first everyone believed that those debris were part of some novelty aircraft manufactured in the United States or England, said Pavel Klimchenkov a former KGB operative, but having done some measurements material analysis, we came to the conclusion that none of the domestic or foreign manufacturers known to us could have produced this apparatus, at least not in the conditions existing on this planet. Along with Pavel's testimony, authentic KGB top secret documents were obtained by the filmmakers allegedly costing them $10.000. The documents described in detail a crash site recovery operation of a disc-shaped object and organic remains. Based on the credible testimony, KGB documents, expert film analysis and the general good feeling one gets when watching this interesting crash site video, it is safe to assume that this film indeed may be authentic. What about the autopsy? This footage will be posted in our second part article along with thoughts and analysis. Actors training exercises, skepticism. Some have put forth the argument that an American production crew filmed the footage in March 1998. These claims are put forth on websites claiming to know the truth about this footage. To date they have failed to show even one current photo of any of the soldiers in the film nor any statements from the actors that they were indeed only actors in this film. This should be easy to obtain if the footage was recently filmed. Some have put forth the argument that an American production crew filmed the footage in March 1998. These claims are put forth on websites claiming to know the truth about this footage. To date they have failed to show even one current photo of any of the soldiers in the film nor any statements from the actors that they were indeed only actors in this film. This should be easy to obtain if the footage was recently filmed. Another theory suggests the film was a training exercise. Yet no one has produced witnesses verifying this claim. One skeptical viewpoint suggests that the object's thickness is far too small to support any would-be alien pilot. The craft's outer edge as seen on the image is only 12 to 36 inches. However, it is not necessarily indicative of the overall thickness of the craft. The image was taken from the only part in the video sequence where the craft's edge is visible, and since the camera never goes behind. There is no way to tell how much depth the craft may have on the other side. Additionally, if you consider the side facing us may be actually be the bottom, we can easily see that this craft can easily fit the traditional flying saucer shape as demonstrated by the below images. In this documentary they claim that, since they only were able to acquire four canisters of film, more film footage of this incident is available. Such as the entire digging, cleanup, and inside the craft investigation. To this date, almost a decade after it went public, no other videos have surfaced. A UFO crash site allegedly filmed by the Russian KGB in March of 1969 in the Sverdlovsk region of Russia. The footage was later obtained by documentary filmmakers who then published the movie, The Secret KGB UFO Files A film expert noted in the documentary that the film came in an old Soviet film can and the numbers on the film's header matched the cans they came in. The header of the film has the crest of the KGB on it and the term for T.O.P. secret. An autopsy of the alleged pilot of the UFO is seen in the documentary film. Soviet doctors examined the burnt torso of the entity and it is revealed that the three doctors died one week later all from cerebral hemorrhages. Death certificates are presented as proof. Several KGB documents are produced to prove the film is authentic. 
Some have put forth the argument that an American production crew filmed the footage in March 1998. These claims are put forth on websites claiming to know the truth about this footage. To date they have failed to show even one current photo of any of the soldiers in the film nor any statements from the actors that they were indeed only actors in this film. This should be easy to obtain if the footage was recently filmed. Another theory suggests the film was a training exercise. Yet no one has produced witnesses verifying this claim. UFO aliens may have helped build pyramids of Giza says, Cairo University archaeologist. Head of the Cairo University Archaeology Department, Dr. Ayla Shaheen in December 2010 had told an audience that there might be truth to the theory that aliens helped the ancient Egyptians build the oldest of pyramids, the Pyramids of Giza. On being further questioned by Mr. Marek Novak, a delegate from Poland as to whether the pyramid might still contain alien technology or even the UFO with its structure, Dr. Shaheen was vague and replied I cannot confirm or deny this, but there is something inside the pyramid that is not of this world. Delegates to the Conference on Ancient Egyptian Architecture were left shocked, however Dr. Shaheen had refused to comment further or elaborate on his UFO and alien-related statements. Down below is 90s The Secret KGB UFO Files documentary, that deals with the fact that Russian had already discovered the tomb of alien humanoid in Egypt and something is beneath the pyramid. The Secret KGB UFO Files documentary interestingly supporting the head of the Cairo University Archaeology Department, Dr. Ayla Shaheen claim as well. Actually ancient Egyptian writings very often talk of beings from the sky, the sky opening and bright lights coming down to teach them technology and give them wisdom. Many pictures and symbols resemble UFOs and aliens. Possibly aliens built the Great Pyramid. And these solid long-lasting construction techniques were adopted by the Egyptians. Ancient Egyptian legends tell of Teb Zepi, or the first time. This is described as an age when sky gods came down to earth and raised the land from mud and water. They supposedly flew through the air in flying boats and brought laws and wisdom to man through a royal line of pharaohs. And of course, this was all thrown out the window when Christianity came along. Keep in mind that the gods were the one and only religion that there was. No other conflicting beliefs? Why? Well because it was fact, not faith. The modern church would have you believe that's it's just a myth. But you have to ask yourself on the edge of Oakham Razor, what truly indeed is more likely? There has always been the question. How did the Egyptians feed and care for the 100,000 s slaves that it would have taken to build the ancient structures like that of the pyramids in Egypt? One minute it is a very backwards country and almost overnight a highly advanced and technological culture sprung into existence. We now have the answer to that very question and evidence that the Egyptians had help extraterrestrial help at that. Thanks to Russia, the KGB and a top secret project called Project ISIS. Astrophysicist, neurologist and science advisor and advanced propulsion system gained access to the files of Project ISIS. This was a top secret project brought about by KBG concerning the discovery of the Tomb of the Visitor in 1961. Up until Sci-Fi purchased this exclusive footage from an agent of the Russian Mafia, it had never been seen outside the top secret facilities of the KGB. Sci-fi showed it one time on television and as it stands today, no evidence of this film or the project is available. Except what we have copies of here given to us by a client that had taped the original show. This video is a, a, a powerful documentary with actual footage filmed by the KGB and verified by specialists in the field. Authentic film footage. If we can somehow bring attention back on Project ISIS and prove it out, it will change the history of the beginning of the civilization of man. During the Cold War, Nikita Khrushchev was determined to show the world that communism was superior over the democracy. As he realized that it would be too costly to compete with the U.S. in the space race, Khrushchev chose to go the other route. Having over 300,000 agents in the secret police and espionage organizations he focused most of this resource on alternative science, such as paranormal phenomena exotromatic weapons, biogenerators and mind-altering machines. 1920s, during the Stalinist regime, a dark room was created where the KGB conducted psychotronic weapons research on prisoners sentenced to die in political dissidence. 
After 1936 these files were transferred to the secret archives of the KGB, continuing on with their paranormal research. Khrushchev achieved great success with his biogenerators and machines to alter human minds, which worried, naturally, the United States, knowing that the Soviet Union was there to conquer and overthrow. Russia, being that its borders surrounded the largest landmass of the world, had the largest amount of UFO sightings. If they could capture one of these flying objects and reverse engineer it they could have the greatest advanced aeronautical designs. They got lucky in January 1986 when a spacecraft crashed in Dalgorsk but remained intact. The craft was back engineered and the process was quite successful. But to achieve the most superior advancement in global domination, they went in search for something that was only a rumor or legend. The Chamber of Knowledge in Egypt if the legends were true, storehouse of knowledge left behind by ancient visitors from outer space was concealed in the Great Pyramid. A team of archaeologists were composed of Egyptologists from the Russian Soviet Academy of Science, was sent to Egypt. The fearing that the CIA would learn of this expedition, the Kremlin operated with complete secrecy. By the late 1950s Egypt accounted for 43% of all the Soviet aid for third world nations. When they started the ISIS project the Soviet military personnel in Egypt was estimated over 20,000. The heavy military presence was used to disguise the efforts of the mission scientists headquartered in Cairo. They would operate under the guise of Arab peasants or Russian officers. To speed things up, in 1959 the KGB recruited professional informationalists to wiretap Egyptian officials. This paid of in July 24, 1961 a conversation was recorded that would then change myth into reality. The official had been given a call that two Bedouin had stumbled upon the tomb of the visitor. The Bedouin were in the hospital and kept repeating, the visitor God. At this moment in time, Project Isis became top priority and all efforts were made to immediately follow up by having the Bedouin show them where they had found this tomb. SEIFI was able to purchase several documents and film footage as to the KGB documentations of their findings. Taken out of Egypt and brought to the secret facility of the KGB was this. Memo to high-ranking KGB official. My agents had secured the notes of one of the scientists working on the tomb of the visitor findings. Another was the inventory of contents taken from the tomb as follows. Location of finding. Undisclosed. 15 crates of relics, 1 partially mummified body, 1 stone sarcophagus, 8 hieroglyphic samples. Old report from a project scientist that was one of the first to enter the tomb. During the inspection of the wall segment we noted that a strange magnet repulsive force seemed to be emanating from the rock. We were unable to find any scientific explanation cryptologist report. Partial decoded message on tomb wall indicating a prophecy of the return of the winged gods. The Kremlin took the cryptologist report very seriously. KGB was ordered to determine target locations e planets, stars, galaxies. They had to duplicate the stars as they would have been over Giza thousands of years ago. They finally found it, in the stars and constellation of Orion during the year 10,500 BC. Although it was possible that the builders could have been working off plans of a time before the pyramids was constructed this was proven not to be the case. Metal and synthetic materials of tomb were determined to be of unknown origin and the tomb was carbon dated giving it a dating of 10,500 BC meaning the pyramid had to have been made at 10,500 BC. Kins of film were purchased by SEIFI through the Russian Mafia agent which originally came from the maximum security archives of the KGB. These kins contain film of KGB filming the process of the tomb and sarcophagus being opened. Sci-Fi had this film analyzed before purchasing by experts in this field. Finding no evidence of fraud, SEIFI purchased kins of film. The documentary is in black and white showing soldiers entering the tomb without gas masks. As they opened the sarcophagus, you can see toxic fumes escaping and the reaction of the soldiers as they were being affected. It also shows the mummy contained inside. The film shows the soldiers leaving the tomb fast and then a chemical warfare specialist team comes in with protective clothing. There is talk from one that was there in the tomb, that the energy inside, 
during the first days of exploration was very very high. They also had a team of psychics go in and do some special readings of the tomb. It later goes on to show the KGB and Bedouin loading trucks with crates to be shipped back to Russia. According to KGB documents, researchers began to wonder if the pyramid was designed for one particular purpose. They thought it was possibly a machine, being that it was designed like a three-dimensional triangular depiction of a hemisphere. Their thoughts were there must have been a reason why it was designed for resonating with the planet. Their thoughts went to a prism and that the pyramids have powers to alter the cosmic rays, that the pyramids are huge prisms capable of concentrating energy, capturing light from the stars which would initiate a process which would turn the pyramid into an interstellar transmitter. The three pyramids and SPHNIX could be integral parts of an immense machine designed by alien engineers linked by a master control mechanism inside the Great Pyramids. They noted that the passageway goes to main chamber and above the sarcophagus was a tunnel of star shaft. They reasoned that when a specific star alignment occurs a streak of energy goes down the shaft. Scientists speculated that the radiant energy hitting the sarcophagus could initiate something similar to a cold fusion reaction. The prism structure of the pyramid would then magnify and transfer to the corresponding pyramids. A unifed beam of energy could erupt creating a cosmic beacon used by alien starship for future navigating. According to ancient legends all around the world, they all have the same thing in common. The visitors were like men but more like gods. They were giants. They traveled among the stars. They brought us the knowledge. Legends of the first emperors of China were called the sons of heaven and made the first pyramids of China. Mexico and Yucatan have similar legends. Star walkers can be found throughout Egyptian texts and s. American folklore. The visitors are described as the giants man slash gods giants or titans. And it seems. All cultures may be traced to a single parent civilization could it be E.T.? Later on in the documentary, it shows them working on the mummy attempting to give it a face and identity. A computer projection of the mummy was made as it laid in the sarcophagus. Experts that were there to observe the fluorescent reconstruction of the face described to sci-fi that if they had not been there themselves, they would not have believed what the face revealed after reconstruction. When skull and face was completed, it showed a humanoid type large cranium large eyes, small chin, small teeth but not earth humanoid but some being that had to have been extraterrestrial. Later, using underground radar technology, the KBG found a passageway under the tomb of the visitor directly below was a large chamber. They believed they found the chamber of knowledge, but was afraid to open the tomb, thinking it could be a Trojan horse. Capable of blowing up the entire planet. They decided to seal the tomb, wipe away the location of the tomb and close the project. It seemed however that all were affected by the discovery. Some had personality changes. Some disappeared entirely others committed suicide and others no longer could support their old religious beliefs. The first official report of sightings, that we are aware of, was by King Tutkrimaniai about 3400 years ago. Sightings continued through the ages. Sightings seemed to pick up with man mastered the skies. But when we conquered the inner workings of the atom, the aliens of Orion stepped up their observation with an explosion of UFO sightings that continue up to the present. UFO abduction reports began to sweep around the world in the early 60s. A pattern was developing with nearly all abductees reporting physical examinations, insertion of objects and artificial inseminations. Many women abductees believed they were being impregnated to give birth to alien hybrids. In the last decade reports such as these have risen dramatically. It may be highly likely that the genetic colonization program that started back in the ancient times has resumed. The question was asked could they be cloning themselves by implanting their alien genes into human na? Are humans being transformed into an alien species through genetic engineer? The ancient Egyptians have always said that our DNA came from the heavens and that someday they would return. Did the KGB discover the truth in the chamber of knowledge about the true agenda of the et? And what was discovered on the wall of the tomb of the visitor prophesized that they would return. But when? Secrets cannot be contained. 
not even KGB secrets. A group of scientists, computer programs, doctors, etc. shortly after the discovery of the Tomb of the Visitor, came together to discuss the possibilities of this discovery. They fully believed that the Visitor was none other than Osiris, the alien king. Thus they gave themselves the name, the Followers, based off the Followers of Horus in the Egyptian Book of the Dead. According to Egyptian beliefs a family of gods came from the stars to Egypt. They were the ones that gave the people of Egypt the knowledge and wisdom. Later they left Earth back to their star homes, except for Osiris. He stayed and taught the followers. It was their duty to protect and keep the ancient knowledge he gave them until his return. The Egyptians were astronomers and fully understood that the stars were the map to the great god Osiris and the afterlife. Modern followers would secretly come together in their homes to discuss the possibility of the return of Osiris. They believed that the second coming of Osiris would herald a new age for mankind. They believed that when the tomb was discovered and the seal was broken, a signal was transmitted to the visitors. They calculated and estimated the time it would take for the electromagnetic signal to reach the constellation of Orion. They figured that they could return no earlier than April 23, 1985. With that time frame in mind, the group left Russia and took off to Egypt. Never to return. The only remains left behind of their meeting with the visitors was a newspaper clippage found in the KGB archives of a group of tourists disappearing in the middle of the night in Egypt, 1985. And one home movie project with film. This film showed the group in front of the pyramid at night. It shows a light appearing in the sky, the group dropping to their knees in prayer the light becoming brighter and then nothingness. A daughter of parents that were part of this group was shown the home video by the SEIFI team, of which she recognized her parents and burst into tears. Did anyone happen to see a documentary on sci-fi called Secret KGB UFO Files? I happened to catch this yesterday and why I'm leaning to the side of skepticism. I have to admit that it was intriguing. Basically the story goes. In the early 60s the KGB discovered a tomb at the Giza Plateau containing an Eber. Luckily there was film footage ha ha. The grainy film contained footage of archaeologists dressed in KGB gear opening the tomb of what was thought to be an ancient Egyptian king. When they do, toxic smoke overcomes one of them and the other two run out. It is later learned that the body isn't human. The footage looked as if it had been produced to look old. Also, included were shots of psychics levitating in the tomb. One thing that caught my attention is the archaeologist that was supposed to have been claimed by the toxic smoke was later helping move creates of evidence down some stairs. Despite the curious film footage, the documentary was very interesting and had me glued from the jump. For decades, American agencies have stockpiled information on UFOs. So did their counterparts behind the Iron Curtain, soldiers, scientists and spies all paint a disturbing picture of the KGB's secret campaign. Is this the stunning proof that the Soviets recovered something not from this earth? When U.S. researchers began looking into just how much the Soviet government knew about UFOs and extraterrestrial visitation, they were not surprised to learn that the Russians took the subject very seriously. What they didn't expect was evidence of ancient alien visitation, paranormal properties associated with related artifacts and most shocking of all, of a mass abduction in 1985, among the piles of materials obtained from former Soviet spies. Some extremely puzzling and disturbing documents and film footage surfaced confirming rumors, which had been circulating for decades, in the late 1950s and 60s. The Russians became very interested in a number of unusual and newly discovered archaeological sites in Egypt by interpreting ancient symbols. One of those sites was believed to contain the remains of a life form not from Earth. Startling top-secret film footage 
never before seen outside the Kremlin confirms the Soviet mission to recover and analyze these remains. Join host Roger Moore in an exclusive investigation into one of the most compelling events of our time.